Eric Noel. I'm standing in front of the Perfect Peace Baptist Church here on Shaker Boulevard in Cleveland, Ohio. And I'm going to pan across the street to a, a building of interest. I want you to think about this for a minute. Our address is 12001 Shaker. This building address is 12000 Shaker. Why is that of interest? Because of what we're going to speak about for the next five minutes or so. In 2017, there were 5,436 abortions performed in this building. In other words, there were 5,000. 436 children killed in this building. We have zip codes. Uh, they, they give us the addresses, but we are not able to get names and to connect the dots and the like, but they are required to release figures. But this abortion clinic, there was another one in this building for a long while, and there was one, you have the call and post building, and the fourth building down there, that was the Planned Parenthood building. And our building, this church. We purchased it. It was gutted out. We went ahead and restored it. And we worshiped them. And but there was an abortion clinic in our church also. But just think about preterm across the street, right? 5,436 abortions performed in 2017. Now, I went and for scale, you know, I went to the FBI, the, you know, the government statistics, okay, to see, uh, I went to the 50 biggest cities in America, okay, a, a city with a population of above 250,000 people, residents, you know, that's why we qualify. So, I took the homicide rate in the 50 biggest cities in America combined, all of them, all 50 of them. And there was a total of 5,738 homicides in all 50 of the largest cities, Chicago, Baltimore, go on and on, Cleveland, you know, Los Angeles, New York, Boston, okay? Just think about it. 5,738 5, homicides in the 50 biggest cities in America combined. But this one clinic, there were 5,436 abortions performed. But it's done silently, and, and, and no one seems to know, or do we know? Just think about it for a minute. The difference here is 302. There were 302 children less killed in this building than the 50 biggest cities in America in 2017. Now, we have the figures for 2018. In 2018, there was 5,271 abortions performed here at Preterm. 5,271. So what I did for scale, I decided to go look at the homicide rate across America from sea to shining sea. Okay, please excuse the traffic. It's probably around three o'clock in the afternoon on a busy Thursday. In any event, there were 14,123 homicides in all America for 2018. This is the Justice Department statistics, the FBI figures, you know, I mean, hey, check it, do, my, do some fact checking. All across America, all of the homicides, there were 14,123 homicides across America. Now, preterm did 5,271. So if you put three buildings, you know, don't forget there were probably five on our block just a little bit before we moved in. Uh, the one who converted our building, we thank him for doing the second floor for us. It helped us tremendously, but God turned it into a life-saving center instead of a life-taking center as it was on the second floor of our church building. But think about this for a minute. If you take this building and multiply it by three, just put three of them together, and don't forget there were probably five on our block, 
Blood Alley is what it was called. Put three of these clinics side by side. And you know what you come up with? 15,813. If you multiply the children killed there times three, that is 5,271 times three, it equals 15,813. Just think about this for a minute. Homicides all across America? Do you know blacks? I went to see specifically, what about African Americans? And their homicide rate was 7,407. Every black person killed across America in 2018. This one here, 5,271. What is your point, Pastor Noel? Well, as Christians, where do we stand on this? I, I believe, you know, it's not a political issue. It's a spiritual issue. The most innocent among us, the children, and we do it in the dark and, and we support politically people that do. How can we, as a Christian, just do we separate? What do we separate here? Can our separation of church and state in some way where we separate politics from religion or theology, is that an excuse? that what we do Monday through Friday is different from what we do on Sunday. Where exactly do we stand? There are some more videos coming and we're asking a question. Can I, as a Christian, in any type of conscience, support this movement? Or there's a connection with climate change. So those of you that are on the left who are supporting this climate change agenda that happen to be black or African American, guess what? You are expendable, and I'll explain to you later. But the idea that we support this, when we are the primary recipients or the victims of it, is quite startling. Now, I want you to think about it for a minute. Many have attempted to, to compare it to the Holocaust, and when I stop and consider, there were spiritual implications. God was preparing his children to return home. And the devil took advantage of, of that moment and he raised Adolf Hitler and the Jews were, were led into concentration camps. We're familiar, Auschwitz and the like, okay? We know what happened, okay? And no one is gonna deny that, okay? And I mean, their population was decimated, okay? So I want you to think about it for a minute, but still there's no comparison, okay? Um, Initially, someone might say they were deceived, but at some point they came to their senses, but it was too late. There was nothing they could do. They were within the clutches of the Nazis and, and their proxies in all of these places. But you know, our situation is different because not only are we consenting to it, okay? We ourselves being the primary recipients of this service, okay? It was designed for us. Margaret Sanger had to say in the American Baby Code. Please educate yourself, okay? Because I think that the Most High ruleth in the kingdom of men and gives it to whomsoever he will. So I want you to know that whatever, wherever you stand, if you are a Christian, you stand with Jesus Christ. That is if you believe in his death, burial, and resurrection. That is if you've gone to him in prayer, confessing your sins while putting your trust in him and repenting. It's, it's repentance, okay? That's what we do. We hear about Jesus and we respond to him. And then we are changed from the inside out. The world is no longer the influential medium in our lives. We are influenced by Christ. Do I have a witness? I'll talk to you soon.